Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, and it's on the road we are. Or I guess maybe we're off the road. We've been so busy these last uh, these last month. You know, we've well, we've got a lot of things going on. I'll talk about that in a minute. But this is show number 197 of the Irish Roots Cafe uh, Irish Family History Podcast. We've got over 300 uh, broadcasts all the way here now. I haven't counted for all, all six different shows. I haven't counted the total number of shows, but I think it's over 300. But this is 197 of the Genealogy Podcast. And among today's topics at the Irish Roots Cafe is the family name of the day, Talbot. We've got some short notes on that. Number two, County Kerry, Ireland, and the Irish Families Project is detailed. And number three, searching for O'Brien, Driscoll, and Kerry. And number four, the Donahue family from Glen Flesk is ex- exposed by none other than your fine host here. Coming up shortly. <laughs> Oh, and everybody remember in all those podcasts, we've got uh, free podcasts, we have archived podcasts podcast for a small fee and we also have member only podcasts that are free for members all part of that 300 podcast package i was talking about now let's take a look at the uh, irish roots cafe and what's been happening here this week well we've just put up my very first shan nos video old style irish song video it's a little rough there on youtube i also put it on facebook but as I had to remember how to record video up there on YouTube and what format to put it in, uh, I tried several times, but I just stopped with the third the third shot and left it there, and uh, the next ones will be even better. And this one is on Rev 2 Aaron Caddick, and uh, that's about uh, uh, Will You Meet Me at the Rock, or Did I See You at the Rock? Uh, it's, it's all about the mass rock and meeting in secret and code language and uh, things like that. We'll talk more about that later, too. Number two, I've also started a traditional Irish song group page on Facebook. Feel free to post or view a a video of a traditional song, music, or dance anytime. And that address is uh, www.facebook.com slash Irish song. And if that isn't enough to keep you busy, this is number three. The folks at FamilySearch.org now have a microphone microfilm ordering system available in selected areas and it's great for family researchers needing one of those records when they're researching you know get that film all ordered and in i've got a link to that on the blog you don't have to travel to that family history center anymore the details on the blog familysearch.org oh well you know i'm going to talk today at some length about one county carry family and yeah i'll tell you why it's because the very first county book that i decided to write and publish for the irish families project was county carry ireland And that's in part because of my mother's side of the family. Uh, Now, in that family, we had passed down there for two or three generations that it was Shirley County Cary that they came from. And it was just a few scraps of information, however, that came down to me over the years. Of course, I was a typical American young boy, and I didn't have my mind on any of that sort of stuff until many years later when I was struck with wisdom. Uh, And that's how I got here. Now, I had been told that we were the O'Donohues of the Glen, for that was told to my mother by my grandmother. Now, I didn't know that it meant that we came from Glen Flesk in County Kerry at that time, 
but my mother also told me that she would imagine a horse galloping through the glen and how beautiful it was, and that was even in spite of the fact that she nor her mother had ever been to the glen. It was one ethnic memory that led me to make the first trip to Ireland to find out just who I had descended from. Now, there are always those little Irish secrets, you know, especially in Irish families. And, you know, I remembered very little else, but there are a few things. Now, I remember when I went down to speak uh, in San Antonio before an Irish group, gosh, it must be 30 years ago, my Uncle Jim Donahue counted from 1 to 10 in Irish Gaelic at a language seminar. I was stunned. He had never spoken in, in Irish or said anything about Irish before in his life, and here he spoke up in this seminar and counted from 1 to 10. I had no idea where it had come from, or that my grandmother had also taught one of her granddaughters how to dance an Irish jig. Where was I when all this was going, going on? I was on the far side of town, and I never was included in that part, I guess. I was just lost in America for a few decades, decades while growing up, I think. And isn't that the case for so much of us? You get down and remove two, three generations and things start being forgotten. Be back with you in a second. Oh, and I tell you, there was a few more things, a few more secrets that got let out over the years as I was researching my family history. Uh, hey, there were a few stories passed on about my, my Donahue grandfather who died when my, uh, my mother uh, was just turning 16 there. She never got her sweet 16 dance with her dad. She always remembered that. And she also told me he delivered singing telegrams as a boy, which I didn't know until I was 50. And he was a telegrapher. We knew that. And he almost died in the great flu epidemic. And his favorite song was The Rising of the Moon. That was according to my uncle. Now, according to my mom, it was that song, Oh, Patty, dear, and did you hear? Which, the same tune as The Rising of the Moon. One was warlike, and one was not quite as open about it. Uh, but that was an interesting thing to find out. And my mother also remembered one day she was walking by the, t the television. I was watching MASH, the TV show, and there was a little tube there, and Hawkeye and those guys were uh, in the tent distilling some fine drinking uh, fluids, I believe. And she walked by and she said, oh, my dad had something just like that. He made root beer in the basement. That was during the Depression, you know. And, oh, I could hardly, <laughs> I could hardly contain myself. If she thought it was making root beer. They had told her when she was a very young girl that, that they were making root beer for everybody. And, and, of course, she believed it. But, oh, my gosh. She was serious, but I couldn't hold in but a very, very loud chuckle or two. They had to burst out. And I've never forgotten it since. Now, more to the point, uh, she also remembered that my grandpa would tell visitors when he, when they walked into the parlor and were talking to him, she could remember him saying, we're in America now, speak English. And that could be one reason why the family quickly assimilated into the American culture and why they were successful in many professions. It might also be why I had not heard many of those stories that I wish I knew about today. Uh... Hey, like this one, the County Kerry Hedgerow. Well, I didn't know, uh, as I accumulated all these secrets, that we had a hedge school tradition in the family. My ancestor had been educated in a hedge school in County Kerry a long time ago. And that might be one reason the family all got an education when they came to America. They really put a high value on it. And those hedge schools, they came out of the... Uh, really the fall of the Irish culture and when Irish schools were outlawed and you couldn't teach in Irish at first back there, uh, come out of really all the troubles in the 17th century. But that's how it affects us today. Those things that happened 300 years ago, it's bearing upon us today. And that's one reason why uh, uh, a lot of uh, Irish Catholics have their own schools to this day. They had to watch out for that federal government, don't you know? <laughs> Okay, we'll take a break from my storytelling to, uh, to salute our magnificent seven members. Let's raise our eyes skyward and ask for help. Welcome new member Ronald J. O'Brien of Buxton, Maine, trying to find information on Richard E. O'Brien. He says, my great-grandfather, born 8-24-1862, uh, County Cork, father Thomas O'Brien, mother Mary Carey 
arrived in Portland, Maine, USA in 1866. Number two, Michael Ranspot of Kew, Surrey in the UK, your County Kill Kenny book has shipped. Number three, Michael Prendergast of Rahini, Dublin. Well, we thought it was Rahini, Dublin, but uh, uh, the, the, the folks you shipped it to weren't there, but we've got it straightened out through email. And uh, the Gaelic titles has shipped. Number four, Peter Doyle of Westport County Mayo, your Kildare book has shipped. Number five, Neil Cleary of uh, Hampshire, United Kingdom, your County Kilkenny book has shipped. Number six, six, Micheline Hanrahan of Vermilion, Ohio, your County Galway genealogy book has shipped. And that was from the uh, uh, Dublin, Ohio Irish Festival. And maybe that's Micheline. I think it was probably that's Micheline. Number seven, Kathleen Schuler of Panama City, Florida. Welcome as a member. Uh, looking for Michael Driscoll and wife Joanna Driscoll. He was born in England to Irish parents. A lot of folks did that, don't you know? And then they'd leave from Cove down there in County uh, uh, Cork. They might get transferred over from Liverpool. They'd leave out of Liverpool first. Confuses some people when they're looking at their... Uh, uh, their passenger ship records and trying to figure out, well, if they left from from Liverpool, how could they be Irish? Well, lots and lots of Irish over there in Liverpool, even to this day. Uh, hey, check out our online search list on the web. Uh, now we're going to get back to some of our stories. Okay, we'll get, we'll get back to those stories. We talked about the hedge school. Now I, I better get a few genealogy notes in while I have the chance. Somebody might make a connection with me. Uh, before I forget the genealogy side of things, uh, here are a few legends. And number one, Cornelius Donahue and Mary Kelleher, Kelleher had both planned to make the trip to America. Now the story says that, and it gets a little fuzzy here, the story I first heard said that the Kelleher's parents drowned in the river shortly before the voyage, so she did not come over. But I've been informed by an honorable Sullivan branch of the family that indeed she did come but lived apart. Very interesting. And here's a shocking thing. It's about DNA, and it's very disturbing DNA. We know that the O in O'Donohue and before Irish names means grandson of or descendant of or perhaps even sometimes follower of, but nobody much says follower of for the macro. So if you believe in the new DNA, we got a whole new story to tell you because they tell me that the O'Donohue's of the Glen were not O'Donohue's by blood at all. They must have been followers. But then again, maybe the O'Donohue's were the O'Donohue's and it was all the other O'Donohue's that weren't really O'Donohue's. If you follow that, and if, if you're O'Donohue, I think you will. Oh, and there's something else. I'm glad that, you know, right now that at this point, my uncles are all gone from this world for this reason, because they were renowned as the masters of caustic invective, and they descended directly from Marnie Dew herself. And that was, I think she was the grandmother of the liberal, uh, liberal, liberator Daniel O'Connell. And he'd give short shrift to any claim saying that they weren't related. Science aside of itself. Well, you know, it's been fun talking about all this, and there's a, there's a few more stories I could still share. Uh, like, like when I was researching in the history books, the English reports from the area down there by Glenn Fleskin said, I think that nine-tenths nine of the trouble caused in this neighborhood is all by the O'Donohue's, and if we got rid of them, we'd sure have a nice little country here. Well, it never quite happened now, did it? And I also stood by the Don Donohue Castle at Killaha, the O'Donohue of the Glen, and I stood by that castle, and Father uh, uh, Mulcahy, I think it was, explained to us how they stuck the pikes there in front of the castle, cut off Donahue's head, and set it on the stake. And then he pointed out across the hill where the cannons uh, shot shot the cannonball into the castle to, co to collapse the walls. And he showed us a little hidden chamber, things like that. It was quite a it was quite a trip, and we even had services said in inside the broken walls of the uh, castle. Now I think the house there that uh, housed the good father is now gone or taken over by the state. Uh, I'm not sure, but boy, what a trip that was! And I had several of my uncles with me at that time, and uh, it's something I'm sure we uh, will never forget. And if you get a chance to go over to Ireland and track the family, be sure to bring some more family along. Even if it's five or ten years later, they'll sure enjoy it, and uh, it'll get passed down through the generations just like this one was. 
Oh, we're coming up near the end now. Oh, that was Father Mulvihill, not Mulcahy. That's an important point. Thanks. Oh, well, let me see. I better cover uh, the Talbot surname, the Talbot surname report. Well, I'll give you some quick notes. One family of that name was of old Norman ancestry. That means they came in back there around the 12th century, probably, maybe a little later. Later, They arrived in England with William the Conqueror and then came on over, and two of this line are said to have settled in Ireland. Now, Richard Talbot settled at Malahide in County Dublin, and the name is a very long standing there, centuries for sure. Now, Sir William Talbot of Carton, County Kildare, is found in the early 17th century, and the Talbot family of Talbot Castle, County Wexford, is given in the Irish Book of Arms. And all this information is taken from the Book of Irish Families, great and small, just to let you know where we're getting it. And, uh, gosh, what do we got next? Oh, I tell you here, we've got three, two books I wrote on County Kerry as a result of my County Kerry heritage. And, of course, one of them was the very first county book I wrote in the 34-book uh, set that I got together there. Now, the families of County Kerry, Ireland, is the one I was talking about. That's the hardbound one, the first county one ever written by me, and I sure enjoy it. A lot of Donahue information in there, and uh, I'll give you a few of the other names in just a second. Well, let me see. I've got so many names in that. I've got 3,000 names that I looked up uh, bits of history on, and I've got a full column for like 50 different families. And uh, you can look on the blog to get the full list, but it's, it includes names like Bateman and Binner and Blinner Hassett and, of course, McCarthy and O'Connell and, of course, O'Connor Carey and uh, uh, the Donahues and Eager and Falvey and Herbert and Hussey, O'Mahony, Mason, Moriarty, uh, Morris, Palmer, Pierce, Rice, Raymond, Spring, Stack. They got the Stack Mountains over there. Uh, Sullivan, Trant, the list just goes on and on. But that's just a sample of some of those families there. And this is basically a, a nice book with a lot of family histories in it. So uh, uh, don't let it pass you by if you're interested in it. Now, the second book that I wrote is County Kerry, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History Notes. And that's our County Kerry research book that is spiral bound. Uh, it's created to help you find any family name in County Kerry, any, any name at all. It's not a gigantic collection of family histories. This one gives us the sources most often consulted when folks visit the Irish archives here at the foundation uh, for families in that county. And it includes actual copies of records and rough sketches and arms from centuries past and uh, names and addresses, the complete 1659 census for County Kerry and the like, and it's a hands-on guide for finding your family in the county itself. And it's actually the 29th county book in our series, so it's well worth it. And we've also got the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, which is the master volume, which has hundreds of Kerry families with more details in it than in these little books. And plus, we've got one more thing. Well, that last thing is a video on the Irish Families Project. I've got a link to that on the blog, and that explains the Irish Families Project. Let's just see the actual books right there so you're not guessing. And you see, I explain that, you know, the seven hardbound ones show them. Uh, and I show the spiral ones and, and the different counties' names and that are laid out there. So that'll help you uh, uh, see if it's something you want to consult or not. And you don't have to buy them. You can go to the library. A lot of the major libraries have them, and if they don't, say, hey, get these books. Well, yeah, they're good. They've been around for a while too. Hey, and the neat thing is I'll have to announce this in another uh, podcast or another uh, blog. I think now we've got 10 or 12 of them just reprinted, all with full-color maps of the county uh, in, in on the county on the cover and it's a detailed map there's so many names and so much on that cover it is clear but you might have to get a magnifying glass to read the detail of all the names on the map uh, uh, all the place names uh, but it sure can help you when you're lost and uh, since it's in color it's a little easier definition and you can see that I think it's the barony sometimes are in color in the background 
and it helps delineate delineate the towns and the sections of the county. And uh, I thought it was a good addition. We're going to try to do that to all 32 volumes, but you know what it takes. <laughs> it takes time and money. I'm running out of both. I don't know how much I got left, uh, but I appreciate uh, each and every member, each and every uh, patron that helps out here. I appreciate the folks uh, on the Irish Head School page at uh, Facebook, the people that come to my webpage at irishroots.com, uh, and the Head School uh, on my webpage, too, that we're trying to expand. And I tell you, it's just all been great. And now we've started the Irish song and recitation. I've started to sing some of that old-style Irish things, and uh, uh, it's really been a kick. So if anybody wants to get involved in that and they're ever local around KC, uh, give a holler. We might get something together. That'd be nice to get a little traditional group together now, wouldn't it? And that song I mentioned earlier, uh, since I've got a few seconds here to kill, it went like... Uh, Arev to Aaron Garig, no waka to him mora, no waka to gile finya agus game and aminia agus honek me do. It goes on and on and on. I was just breaking into another verse there give you an idea what it sounded like that's the old they call it shan no singing and that's the old old way of singing before they had much accompaniment and uh, uh you might just be out in a field or in town and there's there's nothing else to do so you better be able to sing and boy some of these old guys can really sing i'm a really liking it uh so i'm gonna start putting those on youtube youtube as well as some uh, genealogy help help items so I'll see you there and be sure to stay tuned for our next show. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Uh,